back at it with a quick opening video. Um, I've had a bunch of students face this rare line in the Alpen, and there's a lot of ways you can get to it. Um, this is a little trick in the Smith Mora. I mean, normally you're going to reach this position from C3, Knight F6, E5, Knight D5, D4, C4. But in the main game, my student faced D4, and he understood the transposition trick that you can play Knight F6. And White really doesn't have any other moves than to transpose back into the main line. And then at this point, queen takes d4 was played. And this is a rare sideline in the Alpen. And I really liked the way my student played this game. So I wanted to show it and then uh, add my notes to it at what I think uh, white could try to do to be tricky. But overall, uh, I don't think it's a good line for white. So e6 is my first choice move. It goes along with the rest of like a Khan, Taimanov, Sicilian repertoire. Knight f3. Knight c6 to hit the queen. And in the main game, my student's opponent played queen d2. I think the most accurate move is queen e4. And then at that point, we tempo the queen, f5. And here, there's only really two moves that I consider um, as playable, and both of them, I feel like black gets an easy-to-play position that isn't hard to understand. The first is queen e2. And if you remember this one move, you already have a pretty decent position, and it's very playable. So your bishop isn't easy to get out, and a lot of people play b6 here, but I really like the move b5, because it says, would you like to take my pawn, please? And if white decides to grab this free pawn after a5, the queen isn't on a good square. We're threatening bishop a6 with tempo, and we already have some great piece play. So I think this position is an excellent try for black for an edge. And if white doesn't want to take the pawn, I mean, you're following up with queen c7 and starting to hit the e5 weakness, which we'll see in the other line as well, uh, in the main game, rather. So the other way after f5 is en passant. And again, we hit the queen. And at this point, this position is critical to understand with black because I had a number of games on... Uh, ICC a few years ago where an international master played this against me and I lost two times straight against him and then looked up how to play against this position and figured it out. So d5 is a must in this position. White plays bishop d3 and then let's say black wastes a move. If he does something like bishop d7 or let's say a6. Well bishop g6 is the threat. You can't take the bishop because of the pin and you're going to have to move your king. And this is just a, a horrible position for black. Uh, your development's going to be awkward, and your king's stuck out in the middle. You always want to try to prevent this if you can. So going back, instead of this a6 move, you have to play bishop d6. That's why d5 and bishop d6 are critical to understand, because if white plays this idea with bishop g6 check, we have the e7 square for our king, and our bishop is not hemmed in on f8. So pretty much you have to go back. And now we see the same type of maneuver in many French defenses as well as the Stonewall Dutch. You got to make this bishop great again. Go to d7, and the idea is for him to come out via that route. And once you trade this guy off, you can do the same thing with the queen. So if you could trade queens in this position, black's already ready for the end game with a centralized king and a nice pawn majority in the center. So... Let me quickly show you my student's game that I was impressed with. It wasn't overly uh, a high quality game, but I liked it nonetheless. Um, his opponent played queen d2, which is definitely not one of the main moves. It doesn't make any sense because the queen's in the way of development of the bishop. And he understood the idea of I need to develop the queen so I can hit this weakness. So now white's going to have to defend that. Well, queen g5, again, not a great move. It defends the pawn, but... Tempo the queen again. Queen g3. Now I need to get my light square bishop developed. So b6. c4 is definitely a mistake. Attacking the knight, making him better. So now knight c2 check is threatened, which will win the rook. Love forks. a3. That doesn't help you. Mm. Knight c2 grabs the free rook. And after b4... Starts bringing our knight back. D6. 
d6. Oh, b5's not going to help. Taking another pawn. And this guy doesn't understand that when you're down material, you do not trade. You keep the tension. You need to only trade when you're out material. I make good trades. So queen takes g7, but he didn't see the idea of bishop takes e5. Attack and defense at the same time. The best type of chess move. Queen g4. Check. 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 Oh, setting up tactics. And he's just vicious tactically. e5. The queen's being hit, so she's got to move. And bishop e6. And he had had enough in this position at that point. And white resigned. So hopefully this short video shows you how to deal with this rare sideline in the Alpen. And I thought it was interesting, and I'm just throwing it out there for students.